All right, good morning, everybody. And for those of you on the East Coast, uh, happy lunch hour. Um, my name is Troy Guevara. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar this morning, AP Processing and Document Automation. I have on the line Sandra with TimberScan, and she will be doing this meeting, but we're just gonna wait just a moment while we wait for a few more uh, people to hop on. So if you can just sit tight for just another 60 seconds. Thank you. Okay, it looks like everybody that was hopping on has hopped on. So, again, my name is Troy Guevara, and I'm with uh, Digitech Solutions, and I have with me Sandra with TimberScan, actually Core Associates. TimberScan is a product she's been talking about today. And uh, since this is Sandra, she's a guru of this product, I'm just going to turn the time over to her right now. Sandra, it's all yours. Great. Thank you, Troy. Appreciate the introduction and welcome, everyone. We uh, certainly appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, and thank you very much to the Digitech team. We appreciate the opportunity to um, present to your clients. So you should be able to see my screen. Um, Troy, are you seeing the screen with our pictures on it? I am, yes. Okay, great. Uh, what we will be going through today, um, mostly focusing on, is the process and automation of how you handle your accounts payable invoices as well as all the other documents in your company. Now, the solution that we'll be presenting, uh, this application has much more capability beyond handling invoices and documents, uh, but that's really gonna be the core of the presentation. And of course, uh, this presentation is being recorded. So for anybody who can't attend today, project managers, property managers, et cetera, uh, Troy will send that link out to you and you can forward it to them. Now, I'm going to go through two PowerPoint slides because it is really important for you to understand the concepts of the application as well as the integration with your accounting system. So I'm gonna lay that foundation and then we're gonna spend the bulk of the time in the actual application itself. So you can get a good gut check and see how it, how it functions and how it feels. Now, the TimberScan solution is really the focus of today. So I'm just moving my cursor in the middle of the screen. But overall, what Core Associates offers beyond the TimberScan piece, is also electronic forms and electronic uh, cloud-based tools. We call that core cloud. So I'm gonna touch on that today. Now, the concepts are, if you sort of zoom out for a moment and just think about your company um, and the way you gather information, not just from vendors, but also from employees. What core cloud does is it deploys electronic forms um, that are accessible on an employee's handheld device. Now, when they tap on that icon on their device and they access the core cloud portal, they'll have the electronic forms that you've created and you've deployed. And those forms could include uh, credit card um, submissions, for example. So if somebody wants to submit a credit card receipt or an expense report, it could include uh, time, if they're uh, needing to just submit how many hours they worked in a day or what job or property, and also purchasing receiving. Now, the electronic forms that come with TimberScan automatically is what I'm going to focus on. These are all separate, separate applications that can be added on at any point in time, and those really um, should have a separate uh, demonstration. So for today, I'm only going to cover what's included in TimberScan. Now, the electronic forms that come with the system allow you to create any kind of form you want. So for example, uh, a purchase order, just a very simple PO. If you're using Word or Excel right now, then this is for you because now your staff can access it from their phone, fill out that PO, the PO would be filled out with the fields that you want in the order in which you want. This could be a vacation request, et cetera, et cetera. Now, once that form is submitted, the data goes into uh, an aggregating step 
which means that it allows the accounting department to now access the form, access the data, review it, edit it, make any changes you need to make to it, and now it gets pushed into TimberScan, and that's really where we're going to focus. Now, these forms turn into PDFs, and these PDFs are now electronically filed in TimberScan, routed for approval, and then ultimately attached in Sage. Now, whether you're using Sage 100 Contractor or Sage 300 CRE, uh, all systems work with both accounting applications. So with TimberScan, uh, there's a workflow that's flexible. We're going to take a look at that. And then finally, and just the last thing to mention, if for those of you who are not familiar with Avid Exchange, uh, we partner with the Avid Exchange company. And what Avid, Avid Exchange provides as an option for you as an add-on is something called Create a Check and Automated Vendor Payments. So everything from gathering information from your staff to having vendors submit invoices and electronically routing those for approval, having the documents attached in either accounting system, and then automating the payment to your vendor. Now, the last piece of this, uh, we also are developing integration with Procore. So any of you on the call who are using Procore, if you're using Procore to um, create your pay applications, even if you're approving them in Procore, TimberScan can receive that document and either route it for approval if it still needs it or ultimately just attach it in Sage. Uh, from what I understand, uh, Procore does not do that today automatically, so we can facilitate that for you. Okay, so let's zoom out for a second, and we're just going to focus on TimberScan for now, and then I'll circle back and, and uh, pop into the rest of these applications. So let's just think about invoices from vendors and how you're handling them today. We'll focus on invoices, and then we'll come back and look at other documents. Now, invoices from vendors, the process for handling them is typically where companies experience frustration and inefficiencies. Now with TimberScan, whether it's TimberScan for Sage 300 or TimberScan for Sage 100 contractor, the uh, interface to the systems look a little different, but they work exactly the same way. So this PowerPoint applies to everyone on the call. <clears throat> now the integration with Sage, now this PowerPoint reads Sage 300, but it could be either. The way TimberScan integrates with your accounting system <clears throat> is we create a SQL data warehouse on your server. And in this data warehouse, we're reading your Sage accounting system directly. We're reading your vendors, your cost codes, your properties, your jobs, your GL accounts. And what we do is we extend the function of your accounting system by adding this front end automated process. And what this front end process will do is it'll, it's always based on bringing the images of the documents into the system. So invoices that come in the door, if they're coming in paper form, you'll use your scanner or photocopier to get the images into TimberScan. So that's the concept here is how do we get the image into the TimberScan system so that it can go ahead and do its routing. So if you are receiving emails from your vendors, that's even better. There's an efficiency tool called email automation. And what email automation does, and this is unique to Core Associates, um, as far as I know, no other tools in the industry have this feature. The email automation will read your email inbox all day long, and it'll automatically drag and drop the invoice images into the TimberScan system. And I'll, I'll show that to you in just a moment. So that's the first automation piece. If you don't have an inbox set up, clients will set one up right away. And that's just a central inbox that all of your vendors email invoices to. If your staff is receiving those invoices, you can simply have your staff forward them to that inbox. So the idea is to funnel everything in here. 
even if you've got multiple companies with multiple locations that can all be handled. So efficiency number one. Efficiency number two, and this is an add-on, is optical character recognition software. So once you get into the world of technology, now all of these doors open for you. If you decide to add this character recognition, what it will do is it will read the text on the invoices and it'll actually pre-fill the data entry screen for you. And I'll show that to you as well. This is driven off of templates, super affordable add-on. And this add-on does not necessarily eliminate data entry, but it will certainly minimize it. So it's a time savings tool. Okay. Invoices have been funneled in. Some of the data has been picked up. Now, a key concept is data entry happens in TimberScan, TimberScan 100 or 300, rather than in your Sage accounting system. So I'm going to pause for a moment, and this concept is really important to establish. Today, you're entering invoices into your accounting system directly. Whether you're entering them into the system directly right away and then sending them out for approval, or you're waiting for them to get back approved and then entering them into your accounting system. In either case, the challenge is still tracking what's out there, trying to figure out what the dollars are, and you may be entering them into an Excel spreadsheet to track them. Um, understanding who's got what, how long they've had it, what the dollars are, and just trying to have control. It's also frustrating for the people approving if it's in paper, that means they have to be in the office and they may not always be in the office. If it's by email, now you're scanning and emailing and having to track emails. So all of that goes away. Now you're handling all of your documents in, a, in an application that will automate the entire process. But the key is that everyone has access to the application and sees the documents within it. So just keep that in the back of your mind as I walk you through. Now, doing the data entry in TimberScan means that you're seeing all of your Sage AP setup. Everything you have set up in your accounting system is going to be replicated here. That includes your header, your distribution grid, and I'll show that to you as well. So all of your data is being read live. You do your data entry here, and you don't have to know the coding on the invoice. So don't worry about that. If it's the approver's job to add that information, that's totally fine. Based on permissions, they're going to access their invoices. They'll add that. So once you've done just some basic indexing of the document, now this batch of documents will be routed to the appropriate people for approval. And these are routing rules. So routing rules will be invoked at this stage. And routing rules are basic or sophisticated or anything in between. What this boils down to is us having a discovery session with you, understanding how do you make these decisions today? How do you decide who gets what? What is that based on? Is it based on uh, properties? Is it based on jobs? Is it based on commitments? Do you route certain types of invoices um, to certain types of people, depending on their role? All of that can be built into the system. TimberScan will understand what rule applies to each invoice, and it'll route that batch to the appropriate people based on those rules. You can always override a rule and route manually. Now, approvers can get an email notification letting them know they've got invoices in the door. Now they'll go ahead and access their invoices within TimberScan. So we're not using email. We're not using Windows folders. We're right within the software. Now approvers can access their invoices remotely using their phone, tablet, iPad, or laptop, or they can come into the office. That's a huge efficiency, number three, remote access. And, and people in the field, that's huge for them. Now, invoices can go from to multiple people, it can go in a certain order, and those people can have dollar thresholds. So as invoices go from person to person to person, they can go to final review. This gives the accounting department the opportunity to review the invoices, look at all the coding that may have been added by an approver, make sure it's all good, and then 
push the images and the financial information to your SAGE accounting system, 100 or 300. And at that point, those documents get attached to the paperclip within SAGE AP. Now, while documents, while invoices are in the approval process, you can have the dollars update your financials as often as you like. We have an accrual utility and TimberScan automatically reverses that entry. You've got full visibility into who's got what, how long they've had it, what the dollars are. You can see the status of any invoice. And we've got reporting. Reporting that gives users full dollars, dollars of invoices that are in the approval process, as well as dollars that are already in the accounting system. And those reports can be run by job, by property, by cost code, by expense account, et cetera. Okay, so let's jump into the software. We're gonna cover accounts payable. Then we're gonna come back and take a look at this automated routing for documents. So TimberScan comes with document management automatically and document management works the exact same way as accounts payable. Bring the document into the system, do the indexing, have it routed if anybody needs a copy or needs to approve it, and then it can be attached in Sage if you like. Okay, so let's jump over there and then we'll bounce back to that uh, PowerPoint and then we'll touch on the Avid Exchange and the Procore tool. So this is your main menu for TimberScan for Sage 300. The Sage 100 application looks different. So the UI um, will have the menu options actually on the left-hand side navigation pane, but the uh, concepts and the capabilities uh, are very much the same. So I'm going to stay within this application um, and we'll pop over to the TimberScan for Sage 100 over at the end so you can see what it looks like. Now, you'll notice here uh, for Sage 300 clients, you're going to have a dashboard. And the key to the dashboard for users is to be able to have uh, a high level understanding of what's going on out there with your invoices. And there's different views available. This panel allows users to enable or disable whatever views they want or don't want. So in the case of accounting, you'd be interested in invoices by days to discount. You might be interested in invoices by job, by company, by payment date, by vendor, et cetera. By approval aging, that's huge. AIM is the advanced image management component that we'll talk about at the end, and that's the document management piece. So any documents that have been routed to you for approval will be sitting in here. Up at the top are all the various tasks associated to the accounts payable process. So bringing documents into the system, we call that acquire. This is where you would do your invoice entry. Once the checks are cut, you would come back in here and attach those checks to the electronic packet. This is where approvers would come in to approve. This is where accounting does final review. You can run various reports that come with the system. And we have a, a inquiries and that accrual utility. Check signers would come into TimberScan as an option to look at the backup for the invoices. Now, what the system is driving towards, what the whole goal here is beyond the automation is also to create an electronic packet of documents. Now, I'm going to pause for a moment here. There's a lot of aspects of this application that give you immediate return on investment. And this is first and foremost one of them. The idea that you can have documents attached to each other automatically by a system that will do it for you. So this packet is stored on your server and the concept here is that now you can easily search for any one of these documents and retrieve them. So the first page is the invoice. The second page is an invoice approval page. Every time someone logs into the application, TimberScan will put a date and timestamp with the person's name showing who did what and when. Following that, you'll have the ability to attach any supporting documents you need to POs, lien waivers, contracts, agreements, uh, anything at all, you can scan it and attach it to the invoice. And then the proof of payment. So if it's a physical check, you're going to go ahead and scan that, and I'll show you how to do that. 
this could be an EFT remittance. And if you're going to use the Avid Exchange automated create a check, we interface with that product and the electronic image of the payment will automatically be attached. Now, the goal here is to have these documents attached to one another, stored in a server that you have access to, and later, should you ever need to search for any one of these documents, all you need to do is enter one key piece of information. So this is huge. Um, intuitive searching means you're not having to figure out what Windows folder to go to or what filing cabinet to go to. By entering a check number, the entire packet will automatically be pulled with the images of the checks it paid. And then once you have that up on your screen, you simply email it to whoever's asking for it. So you truly go completely paperless and electronic. Okay, so let's pop into each one of these um, screens. And just to give you the look and feel, today's session is super high level. We really wanna create what's possible for you. And then if you'd like to do an actual uh, tailored session for your company, just let Troy know and we'll coordinate that. Okay, so acquiring images. Now, bringing the images into the system, the fastest way to do that in the most automated way is to have the email monitoring tool reading your inbox all day long. And as many vendors as you can get to email you invoices, the better. So TimberScan will pick up these attachments and it'll drop them into the system for you. It's all happening behind the scenes. Now, if you really aren't comfortable with this happening automatically, you can simply control it by doing the drag and drop yourself, just like I've done. And then you've got the option of having TimberScan automatically delete these attachments from this inbox for you, or you can leave them in there if you just want to have them in there to manually delete yourself. So the important piece here is making the jump from being in the paper world to going into the technical world doesn't necessarily have to be a 100% leap because that, that may be uncomfortable for some people. So we do have hybrids. In other words, areas in which you can still manually control things, but you're controlling it within an application. So it gives you that comfort until you get really used to it. And then once you're used to it, then you'll let go of hanging on to um, that type of control and you'll and you'll be in the system 100%. Now, once the images are in the system, the system actually separates the invoices for you. It starts to read the invoice numbers even without the capture tool. This is embedded in the technology. So the person reviewing images, all they're doing is just making sure that images are uh, right side up. If things come in upside down or sideways, the technology has page edits throughout. So you can see my cursor on the far right. You can rotate something if it comes in upside down. Now, the application also gives you annotation capability. So making the switch does not mean you're giving up the cool things you love, like sticky notes or like handwriting. So you can certainly, by permission, give users the ability to have these tools. Okay, now once all the documents are brought in, you click on process and they're ready for data entry. The uh, user interface for Sage 100 contractor clients is exactly the same. Bring the images in, you review them, you've got the annotations. It'll look a little different. It just doesn't have the green background, but the concepts are true. Okay. Once documents are in the system, now we're ready for indexing. And there's two types of indexing, ind indexing the actual invoices that vendors send you or indexing supporting documents. Now, supporting documents that come in before the invoice could be receiving tickets. Credit card receipts would come in before the credit card statement. Packing slips, lien waivers, et cetera. All those coming in, you can scan them, index them. We're going to have a list of your supporting documents set up for you. And then you just simply add key pieces of information. So now they're electronically filed, waiting to be matched up to the invoice when it comes in the door. So those are all sitting here in the background. 
now that invoices have come in, we're going to go ahead and do that data entry. And then again, data entry does not necessarily have to mean that you do all the coding up front. Okay, now I'm going to show you a couple of different examples. Um, one thing to mention is because we're reading your Sage database, any settings that you have set up in AP are automatically going to, to show up in TimberScan. That includes compliance warnings, for example. All right, so the image of your invoice is always going to be at the top of the screen. Okay, and any documentation that the vendor included with the invoice will also be uh, attached. In this case, it's a PO. The next thing you'll notice is the header. Now, my screen is set up to reflect my Sage, but your Sage might be set up a little differently, and so your fields might not uh, look exactly the same. So, what we're reading from your Sage database is your header exactly as it is in Sage AP. So yours might look a little different from mine and your distribution grid will replicate here exactly. So mine shows tax, it shows unit costs, it shows tax group, yours might not. If you're a property manager, then you might not necessarily be seeing commitment and job. In your case, you might be seeing property. So I'm just gonna go through examples, but just know that header and distribution are gonna be replicated exactly from your Sage AP. So what we're doing is we're giving you your Sage AP screen with some added bonuses. The added bonus is that you've got your image here and we're picking up financial data for the users so that they can see information that gives them the financial big picture. And I'm gonna get to that in just a moment. So let's look at the header really quickly. Now, in this case, I used Capture. Now, the Capture software, the optical character recognition, is driven by templates. Each vendor that I wish to have a template for will be set up, and that template is going to recognize key pieces of information that the system is automatically going to pick up and drop into the header and drop into the distribution grid. So, this is a textbook scenario. Capture picked up my vendor, my invoice number, my invoice date. All of this was picked up by Capture. It read the invoice. Now, because my vendor provided a PO number, Capture picked up the commitment. For those of you uh, that use job and commitment, this will apply to you. TimberScan's reading your commitments from Sage live. And whatever you have tied to that commitment is what's going to automatically populate this line. So you don't have to do anything at this point other than distribute the dollars. So the commitment comes in automatically. The commitment has the job, the cost code, all of this data. But what the commitment might not necessarily match are the dollars. So that's the only thing you'd be doing in this step if you were using Capture that picked up commitment automatically. Now, I'm gonna take just a step back before I go into the commitment detail. If you decide not to spend the money on Capture, then, and it's super, super affordable, but if you don't, that's fine. This'll be blank, all these fields will be blank, and you'll just simply fill them in manually, just like you're doing in Sage today. If you know your vendor number, just type it in. If you don't, you would click on list, and a list of your vendors will appear and you'll just simply select from there. You'll manually enter your invoice number, TimberScan will check for duplicates, and you just key, key all this information in, that's totally fine. Okay, you're gonna click on list if you're not using Capture and this field was blank, TimberScan's reading your Sage database and you'll just simply select your commitment. And then this entire line will populate and you'll just override the distribution. Notice how when I clicked on that field, TimberScan intuitively updated the dollars so that we balance with the 32,000. Only 5,000 was on this line item. When I clicked in here, it updated it so that it forced this to balance. So you've got some really cool intuitive features in here. Uh, and of course you can just override that. Now, 
let's take a look at commitment real quick, and then we'll give you um, a different example. Now, TimberScan's reading the full commitment information, the original commitment amount, what's been invoiced against it in SAGE, what's in TimberScan, and what's, uh, what the balance is. So the goal here is to give the approvers and everyone in the company the full picture. If this invoice takes you over the original commitment amount, this will be a negative red, and that'll allow the approvers to handle um, however they need to handle the approval. <clears throat> The hover feature throughout the application drills down to Sage Live and gives the user full financial details, name of the job, original budget, what's been built against it, and the balance, same with the cost code. So this is a huge step forward if you're doing everything manually. Now let's get rid of the commitment line and let's just show you an example where it may not be a commitment or may not be as textbook. Now, let's just say that all I know at this point is the job or the property. And I'm just going to pause uh, because I haven't mentioned it. We work with companies from all industries. So whatever industry you're in, if you're using Sage 100 or 300, then TimberScan will work for you. And there may be uh, multiple locations, multiple um, locations that you have throughout the country, and that's totally fine. We have that capability. Okay, so in a job or property scenario, you would simply click on list, choose from your live list of properties or jobs from Sage. Now, in this example, you don't have to know the coding, and that's the cool part of this automated tool. So TimberScan will know who to route these invoices to based on the project managers assigned to this job. If it was a property, it would know who to route it to based on the property managers assigned to that property. Routing rules can be based on a combination of any one of these fields. So if you want to route invoices from a particular vendor for a particular job to a particular person or group of people, we can do that. We can route by job, by cost code, by GL account, by vendor, and by combinations. We can also route by invoice type. And so we'll have all those rules set up for you. And anything that you need to route manually, you certainly can do that. Now, your distribution will work exactly the same way as you're doing in Sage now. Nothing changes, you're just doing it here instead. You can distribute over multiple cost codes, over multiple jobs, et cetera. Okay, now once you've done your distribution, uh, you can attach any supporting documents that came in ahead of time and that you had indexed. So you simply click on that button. All the supporting documents will appear. Just review them. Anything that matches, select and attach. History is available to all users. It allows them to see all the invoices in existence for this particular vendor on the screen. And the power in this is that invoices are in different stages. So invoices may be really old in Sage history, or they could be in TimberScan and the approval process at some stage. Employees can um, sort by invoice date, for example. And they can look at, well, when was the last time we bought this product? What did we pay for it? So just by looking at this screen, I can see we paid $34.82 for Green Arrow Tape. Now, let me take a look at the actual invoice. Something just doesn't seem right. I can just click on that. I can see the invoice. If I have some questions, I can email it right from here. I can also see the full detail. There's the commitment that it was applied to. There's the cost code. There's the amount that they charged us. Now, this is also true for anything that is in say JP. So anything that, that might be in history, you can still see the detail. TimberScan drills down to your Sage database live and gives you that intel. There's just no image. And you can also email out of the system so that the person receiving the email not only will they automatically receive the attachment, but that email transaction is logged in an audit trail behind the scenes. Now, what's really cool with that 
is not only can you just conveniently email out of here and that email transaction is logged, but if there's a dispute with your vendor, you can now start dragging and dropping the bodies of those emails and add them to the electronic packet. Okay, once you're done, click on accept, cycle through as many invoices as you have time for. When you click on finished, these invoices are now gonna be routed out to the appropriate people based on your routing rules. The approvers can now log into the system and approve the invoices that were sent to them. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the mobile app. And I'm just gonna show that to you from my phone. Okay, so what you see on your screen is, uh, let's do this. There we go. Now, the invoices that have been routed to me are going to be stacked. And all I'm going to do is just look at each one, and it's all a tap and scroll, just like any phone. This could be an iPad, a tablet, an Android, or an iPhone. And as I go through my invoices, I can sort, I can do a quick search if I need to, uh, but let's just tap into this one quickly, and then we'll go back to the application. Any notes that anyone has made uh, automatically pop up. So it forces me to see what people are trying to communicate. So I have to close out of that. Now there's my invoice with the annotations. I'm just gonna tap on that green button at the bottom. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go into distributions. Now in this case, it's a commitment that has been applied to this invoice. I can tap on the information and I can see the financial data. And all I'm doing is scrolling. I'm reviewing the information and I'm gonna go ahead and approve this invoice or I'm going to reject it. If there's an issue with that commitment, I can send it back to the accounting department and I can add a note letting them know what the issue is. I can manually reroute it to someone. I can put it on hold if I'm not ready to deal with it or I can just go ahead and approve it. The other type of approval would be for a non-commitment type of invoice. And in this case, I have access to these dropdowns and I can apply a job or change a job. Same thing with the GL account, same thing with the cost code. So if you've given me permission, I can go ahead and tap on that dropdown menu and I can add a cost code or change it if you've given me access. So approvers have immediate access to the invoices from their phone. They can make the changes they need to make. And then once they approve, it'll get routed to the next person in line. So that's a really cool remote tool. And that is included with TimberScan. There's no additional cost for that. Okay, now if they come into the application, they would come in either from the laptop or be at the office, and they would just log in from the server. And in that case, their screen will look exactly the same as the accounting departments. They'll have their dashboard. Now, what the dashboard will allow approvers to do is shortcut in to a vendor if they're in a hurry. The graph will give them an idea of how many invoices Dallas Tile and Carpet has and the dollar value. It can also, you, they can also see um, on a graph basis how much that vendor uh, has compared to other vendors. So I can hover over this graph and just sort of get a sense of things. I can shortcut in from here. If I need to deal with this vendor's invoice right away, I have a choice of a grid view or a card view. I can simply tap, click on that invoice, review it. If I know it and I'm good with it, I can just do a quick approval right from here. I can also do mass approvals from my dashboard. Or I can go into the full accounting screen and look at each invoice in detail. Either way, compliance warnings also can be turned off for approvers if you don't want them to get those messages. Invoices, uh, pardon me, notes will pop up automatically. Okay, so as an approver, while I'm in here, 
I can see everything the accounting department saw. There's my image at the top, any supporting documents you attached, header information, distribution, supporting documents, history, and email, and there's my full commitment information. Now, the bonus in coming in as an approver is that I also have the ability to run a job cost inquiry report or a property inquiry report. TimberScan has the ability to pull all of the images of the invoices that are in the approval process as well as already in SAGE for any particular job. So as a project manager, I can now see costs associated to this job just by clicking a button. So I can see that we're in almost 300,000. I can sort and filter through these. Ultimately, what TimberScan will do is it'll put job costs or property costs into a report for me. This is all included in the system and it'll put the name of the job or property at the top. It'll subtotal depending on how I chose to categorize the costs. So it'll give me subtotals by cost code or by expense account if it's a property. It'll give me my subtotal at the bottom and it'll all automatically pull the images. So I'm just gonna pause up for a moment one of the immediate returns on investment with investing in this application is not only do the users now have the ability to see financial information in a big picture, but they also have the ability to retrieve invoices without having to do anything. Just click here, click there, and now they've got this documentation. You can also do this at a management level. So if you're in construction, you can do this for time and material billing or cost plus. And if you're in property management, you can do this for CAM billing. And we have clients that use this daily and it saves them hours upon hours upon hours. So this just by itself is huge time saver. Okay, now beyond that, the continuation of routing and approval goes from person to person to person. And once the invoices complete their routing process, they go to the accounting department, you would go into that same screen, review everything, and then post to SAGE. Once you post, that's when documents get attached to the SAGE paperclip. Now, I'm going to just um, touch on the document management aspect. So we've covered the basics on accounts payable. Um, and we're going to come back in here and talk about the other aspects of the application. Now, I know you've got questions on how do you attach a check? Um, what does the check signer see? Um, and those are all good questions. They're all handled within the application very easily. Auto attach check. We read your Sage batch that you just did the check run on, and you simply drop the images into the system and the attachments all happen in the background. You're not having to do that check by check manually. The check signers would come in here and see all the backup once you've done your check run. So inquiries and reports. Now, um, and actually, I'm sorry, I do have one last thing to, to mention on the accounts payable side, and then we'll go into document management. The reporting in TimberScan includes over 12 reports and they all come with the software. And there's all different kinds of reports, but I'll show you just the one. Um, this is the invoice status report, shows who's got what, how long they've had it, and what the dollars are. So 72 invoices are out there, and now I can see by uh, approver what each approver is sitting on, and I can see specifically when they received the invoice, if they've looked at it, and when that invoice is due. So if I'm a little concerned, I can zero in here, look at the invoice, and if I need to email that project manager, I can go ahead and do that market urgent. Or I can just get that invoice paid, push it through the approval process, and then deal with the approval later so that the vendor isn't getting a late payment. So visibility into everything out there is huge. This, that's a huge benefit in the application right there. Okay, now let's take a look at document management. Now, this electronic filing cabinet comes with the system. So it's not a la carte, it's all inclusive. 
And what we're going to do is set up an electronic filing cabinet with a filing structure. It's called AIM, Advanced Image Management. I'm going to give you a quick look at it and give you an idea of this capability. Now, the same concept is true for documents as they are for invoices. You're bringing the images of the documents into the system. And documents could be anything at all. It could be drawings, contracts. If you're in property management, it could be tenant leases. This could also be personnel files, anything at all you're filing now in a filing cabinet or in Windows. The concept here is powerful in that you're going to be indexing this beyond a folder. So we are going to set up your folders for you, and we're going to show you how to maintain this. So you can add as many as you want, and they have your um, labels on them. Now, within each folder, you're not just dropping documents in a folder. What you're doing is you're indexing them. In other words, you're identifying the type of document. Now, within each folder, you'll have an unlimited number of document types with your labels. So in this case, it happens to be a drawing. Now, what's cool about this application is that each document that's indexed, you're going to have the ability to set up indexing fields so that you can pick up pieces of information that you can later search by. Now, in this case, Drawings have job, drawing number, and description. Anything in red is a required field. Anything with ellipses drills down to your Sage database. Now, you're in full control of this cabinet. You can change these fields at any point in time. But what the concept here is that now this drawing is not only identified by the name, but it's going to be searchable by the job, by the drawing number, and by the description. Now, once I save this, it can automatically be routed to anyone who needs to receive a copy of this or needs to approve it. And it's automatically going to be attached in Sage 100 or 300 in whatever record you choose. So when you set up the drawing type in the administration license, you will have indicated whether you want this document attached in Sage and where. As long as there's a paperclip capability in that in the Sage accounting system, this document can be attached to it. So for example, this client may want drawings attached to this job in Sage in job cost. Now, just to, to wrap up on this, there's security. So security is on the folder. Only users who've been given access to it can access documents within this folder. Document types are also by security. So users have to have access to drawings in order to be able to search and retrieve them. Now, the search capability is really easy. So you go into the search, and now the concept here is rather than going into a Windows folder or a filing cabinet, you're just choosing the folder. Now, if you just want to see everything in that folder, you could just say search now and everything in there will pop up. Or you could be more specific. You could say, well, show me within this folder only the drawings. Again, I can do search now, and it happens. Oh, I got to click. There we go. So now just the drawings pop up. Now I can go even a step further and show, show me only the drawings for this particular job or this particular drawing number or description. So again, Whatever pieces of information that document was indexed by is how you can now search. Now, I only have one example, so clearly only one will pop up. But if you can imagine, if you've got even just a handful of employees, you might have a handful of employees, you might have hundreds of employees. Imagine having thousands of pieces of documents all indexed electronically and now you can simply come in here and say, show me all of the certifications that Troy has. I can come into HR. Let's say Troy's an electrician and I want to see his certifications. So I can come in here and now choose by employee. And that's going to read my Sage database 
So when this list pops up, these are going to be all of my employees live from Sage, and I'll just ask for Troy. And then Troy's electrician license would pop up. Now, whenever you view a document, from here, I can also email it. So audits, anything like uh, anything of the like where you're searching for documentation, just this electronic filing it, uh, cabinet itself is just huge. Okay, now we've got just a few minutes left and I really wanted to save that to show you uh, three last things and they're super quick. Now, how does the attachment look like in Sage? Well, whether it's Sage 300 or Sage 100, the concept is the same. The inquiry will always be uh, the first step in looking for something. And there we go. So in this case, I'm going to show you an example of an AP invoice and how that's attached in Sage. Now, the Sage search is a little different. Um, in TimberScan, you can search by any key pieces of information. But in Sage, you need to know exactly what you're looking for. So you need to know the vendor, you need to know the invoice number. If that paper clip is lit up, then that means there's an attachment. And as soon as you click on it, TimberScan's uh, Sage is now going to go to your SQL data warehouse on your server and retrieve that packet. So it's just hyperlinking to the packet on your server. If you do the search in TimberScan, it's doing the exact same thing. Now, from a licensing perspective, <clears throat> you don't need to be a Sage user to use TimberScan. So if you have approvers that do not have Sage licenses, that's totally fine. Although we integrate with Sage and we're reading Sage, the licensing is separate. So we've got clients that have approvers that do not have Sage licenses and that's totally fine and vice versa people in Sage can still look at those paper clips without having a timber scan license. And we can talk more about that um, when we get to the um, level of, of discussing pricing with you. Okay, now um, the last two things to wrap up on are the Avid Exchange. I wanna just chat with you about that. Now, Avid Exchange is an automated payment solution. And what it does, uh, there's actually two aspects to it. Uh, let's see here. Now, once you've completed, let me go back to this PowerPoint here for just a sec. So once your invoices have gone through the approval process, they're posted in Sage. Now that they're in Sage, any changes you make to the invoice are automatically reflected in TimberScan. So I'll just cover that point very quickly. You're gonna go ahead and um, start your check run. Now you've got a couple of options. You can do your check run just like you're, you're doing today. If you're using paper stock, that's totally fine. You can do your check run, print your checks, and then take your checks over to your scanner, scan them, and TimberScan will automatically attach an image of that check to this packet for you, okay? So you don't have to do anything different than you're doing today. However, if you want to automate that, create a check is a solution by Avid that we offer. And what it will do is it'll create an electronic check. So you're not printing checks anymore. It's an electronic check that is created, and that's all done from your Sage accounting system, Sage 100 or Sage 300. <clears throat> now, the automation is really cool because now not only are you not having to use paper stock anymore, but you have a dashboard embedded within Sage where you can actually generate the payment um, you can attach the, the uh, image to the TimberScan packet, and you can electronically send the payment through the Avid Pay network. So the accounting system generates the payment. Now the payment process will begin, and the payment, the money will come out of your account based on what you have set up. So you're going to you're going to um, 
the Avid Pay is going to know when those payments are due to your vendor. So that's all going to be set up for you. You're going to get training and it's very, very, very easy to use. So the money is going to come out of your account. Avid Exchange Pay will receive that money and they'll hold it for 24 hours while they generate the payment to your vendor. So the money is pulled from your bank account. Avid Pay will then push it out to your vendor and you'll see that on your dashboard. So the dashboard will show you the constant status of that payment. Now, if you're not ready to go that automated, you could simply just use the create a check. So you could simply just have the electronic check created and you can still send those checks out electronically yourself if you wanna control the money. But if that's not a concern for you, if that control piece isn't a concern, you can use the Avid Pay process. Now, what's interesting about adding this is the actual cost of sending the payment to the vendor is reduced by half. So it costs about 68 cents for you to send out a payment manually, the check stock, the envelope, the labor, and the stamp. By using Avid Pay, that's cut in half and there's a rebate program available. So if you use their, if you allow them to pull the money from your bank and pay the vendors on your behalf, they send you a rebate and that rebate is actually a check that you get in the mail. Once we work through the numbers, we've had some clients purchase TimberScan and the rebate from Avid Pay actually paid for the TimberScan system. So just something to keep in the back of your mind. And then finally, um, let's just circle back real quick. And I want to touch on that core cloud thing that we mentioned at the beginning. The electronic forms from core cloud come with TimberScan automatically. So an electronic form could be a time off request. It could be just a basic PO, anything at all that you would like your staff to be able to access from a phone like sending in a credit card receipt, they can take a picture of it, they can access that form, fill in some of the details. Whatever information your staff is sending to you from their phone, that data is now gonna go into Core Cloud. You're gonna review that information, it's all aggregated. You can approve it from Core Cloud. And then the real key piece here is the form that they submitted, whether it was the credit card receipt the expense report, whether it was uh, the PO, the time off request, that is now going to be pushed into TimberScan and routed and then ultimately pushed into Sage. And just one correction, the credit card solution is not included. That's a separate add-on. Um, my apologies. But the time off request uh, the, and the PO form, that is included. Okay, so let's go ahead and pause. We're right at the top of the hour. And I just want to ask Troy, I covered a lot here today. So I know you're probably in overload. Um, but we just want to see if you have any questions or you want to make any comments. You, Sandra, thank you. Um, we have had a couple questions come in, but you answered them later. And so it looks like um, you, know, you answered them as you went. So I think uh, those, those were answers. So I think we're we're good there. Um, there is a question about pricing. And I would just say, you know, every company's different, your needs. And so if I might address that, Sandra, uh, we'll just put it like this, contact us. We're happy to walk you through the specifics to your company and we can get you pricing that's specific to you. Great, and you know, actually, since you brought that up, Troy, um, one really important mm -hmm. piece as you think about how many users in your company um, Troy will need to have that information to give you a, a proposal. <clears throat> TimberScan is named user licensing as opposed to concurrent. That's a really important distinction in the industry. And there's a, the reason for that is a concurrent licensing environment can be very frustrating, especially for remote users when all the licenses are used up. So in a named environment, every person has a guaranteed access. So just think about how many users you have in total. The pricing is very, very reasonable and very competitive. And then think about if you're interested in the capture, the optical character recognition. Um, 
also the electronic form. So just let Troy know what components you're interested in, how many users, and he can put together a price. Awesome. Thank you, Sandra. I do appreciate your time. And for those of you in attendance, thank you very much. There's a few that are not currently attended, but we'll be sending this out to. Um, and so we thank you for taking the time to watch this. Everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you, Troy. Talk to you soon. Goodbye.